Hello, this is Mr. Nolan with Graduation Alliance, fitness and health instructor. And today I'm going to go over lesson 2.3.1 from health semester one. And this lesson is going to teach you about reading nutrition labels. We have some new uh, labels that have come into effect as of July 26, 2018. This is the new looking label here that I'm gonna talk about. And you might still see labels like the one on the left here on some packaging. So nutrition facts labels, uh, the Food and Drug Administration requires any food sold in a package to include a nutrition facts label. And this label shows the serving size, calories per serving, and nutrient percent of daily value. So we look over here on the right hand side, this is the percent daily value. And these are based on a 2000 calorie diet. So basically what this tells us is when I eat this item, it'll tell me what percent of my daily allowance am I getting from this nutrient. So we'll talk a little bit more about these and the importance of these in just a moment. So when we read a nutrition label, uh, you wanna read from the top down. So we start looking up here at the top and at part one, which is the serving size. This can be very misleading for people that aren't clear on how to read food labels. So you wanna make sure you look at uh, the serving size and then how many servings are in the container. And then the calorie section is down here below. And then we get into some nutrients that these are the ones we wanna limit. And those are listed as your total fat, your cholesterol, and sodium. And then below that, we have the carbohydrate section, which is broken down into dietary fiber and sugars. And this is, this is one of the older food labels, and I'll show you a new one here in just a moment. Uh, but, but underneath carbohydrates, it breaks it down into fiber, which is a form of complex carbohydrates, and then sugars, and then your protein down here. Vitamins, minerals will show up at the bottom of the food label. This is important to see over here. And when we talk about percent of daily value, that if this number is 5% or less, it's considered to be a low amount. So when I look at this, for example, and it says sodium, 470 milligrams, and that's 20% of my daily value. So this one item is 20% of the amount of sodium I should have in one day. That's a high number. So if I were being health conscious about what I'm eating, I might steer away from this product because it's so high in sodium, especially if you have cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, hypertension, then you want to limit the amount of sodium in your diet. So this, uh, I apologize for the, the pictures a little askew, but here's the old label and which I just kind of went over and uh, over here is the new label that came about in 2018, July 26th to be um, specific. This is when companies were asked to be in compliance and start putting this on their products. So you can tell a few of the differences here, reading from the top again, we see serving size is very large and it'll tell us the size and how many servings are in here. Notice the difference in calories from the old label. It's a bolder, so I can see how many total calories. And remember, this is in one serving. So if this had more than one serving, let's say this said there were two servings in this product and I ate the entire product, I'd need to multiply everything by two. And we look over here, we still have the total fat. So percent daily values have been updated to reflect current re research. So we still have those percentages that I mentioned that show up right over here. And it breaks it down under fat. You have your saturated fat and trans fat and then your cholesterol and sodium. Remember, these are the items that we want to limit, try to have low numbers of these. And then your total carbohydrates. And one big change that's happened now with food labels is that now it will include how many added sugars as opposed to just total sugar. So the old food label would just tell me how many grams of sugar are in the product. And now it tells me there are 17 added sugars. So that means that there's 17 naturally occurring sugars in this 
um, grams of sugar in this item, but then there's 17 grams that are added. And one um, great way to, to kind of put this into perspective that I teach is that uh, one teaspoon of sugar is equivalent to four grams of sugar. So if you divide how many grams by four, how many times four goes into this? So in this case, it would go into, four goes into 34, a little over eight times. That'd be eight teaspoons of sugar, if you wanna put that in perspective, that you'd be consuming. The bottom section is going to have vitamins and minerals. And notice that uh, the old label used to have vitamin A and C as recommended. Now we have vitamin D and potassium. So every five years, the Food and Drug Administration get together and medical scientists, and they look at what we as Americans need to be consuming. Well, what they found out is that we're getting enough vitamin A and C now, but we're deficient in vitamin D and potassium. So that's why they've added this to the new food labels. You also noticed on the bottom down here, it looks a little different, it's smaller, that it used to have uh, a breakdown of a 2,000 calorie diet or a 2,500 um, calorie diet. Now everything is based off of a 2,000 calorie diet. So when we look at these percent of daily value, these are all based on 2,000 calorie diet. So this was going to change, obviously, if you're taking in more calories than 2,000. Let's take a look at a couple different food labels right here. So which food contains the fewest calories per serving? So if we look at these two products right here, we have there's 17 servings per container right here. There's one serving per container here. But what it's asking is which food contains the fewest calories per serving? So if I look at this right here, we know that every food label is based on one serving. So we would say this one has 110 calories per serving. Uh, and this one is 208 calories. So this one would be less. Which food contains the most fat per serving? So if we look at total fat, we see that this one has 1.5 grams of fat and this one has three. So I would say this one is higher in fat. Ingredients in foods, a food label includes all the ingredients that were used to make the food. They're often listed in a confusing way. And as listed right here, although the ingredient list is not part of the nutrition facts label, it's at, it'll show up at the bottom of the food label it's a helpful tool. Ingredient list shows each ingredient in a food by its common or usual name. And this is important to understand here too. Ingredients are listed in descending order by weight. So the ingredient that weighs the most is listed first and the ingredient that weighs the least is la listed last. So when you look up here and I see bulgur wheat, that, is, that means that the, this product contains mostly bulgur wheat on down to sauce, et cetera, moving its way down. Some things to look for too, um, there are additives that get put into foods to be aware of. We have, for instance, different ways that sugar shows up. So you look over here, everything that's highlighted in red is another type of sugar. So we have high fructose corn syrup. We have partially hydrogenated soybean oil. We have sugar, corn syrup, sugar. This product over here, there's a lot of sugar in here. And then one thing I like to tell my students too is if you've got some terms in here that are hard to pronounce, the words, those are preservatives. If you can't pronounce them, they're probably not the healthiest thing to be putting into your stomachs. So some claims on food labels also. Food labels may describe a food using specific claims, like for instance, low fat or reduced calories. And in order to have this label, it has to meet certain FDA um, regulations in order to say low fat, no fat. Uh, if it's considered organic, it's a type of food produced without pesticides, bioengineering, or high energy radiation. And in order for it to be organic, it must consist of at least 95% organically produced ingredients. You, um, in terms of food additives, I talked a little bit about that. Substances added to food products um, are usually added to preserve foods and add flavor more than anything. We have something called the generally recognized as safe list. These are food additives that have been studied and are considered harmless by the government, so you can research into what those are. And then as mentioned, the Food and Drug Administration, their job, 
They're a government agency that regulates medications, biological products, medical devices, food supply, cosmetics, and radiation emitting products. So here's some more information about from the FDA. So defined by FDA regulations, if, if a company wants to put light on their product, like light yo yogurt, then it has to have a third fewer calories or 50% less fat than the traditional product. If it says that it's low fat, then one serving must contain no more than three grams of fat. And if it's considered low calorie, then one serving contains no more than 40 calories. One thing to be aware of that a lot of people miss out on is that if you got a light, low fat, uh, low calorie, those items have taken the fat out, but to keep the flavor, you're gonna find that there might be more sugar content in there to, to make it more tasty. So you take one evil away and you add one evil back in. So be aware of that, how much sugar is in the product. If it's low fat, no fat, et cetera. Okay, so for this assignment, you have an activity to answer some questions based on these nutrition labels that we talked about. Here's just a little bit of some of the questions that you might see in this lesson. Um, review the, the activity before this lesson. It will show you um, some information that will also add to what I covered today. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to your health instructor. We're here to help you, and I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you.